Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com here, and today we've got a video with the DJI Mavic Air 2 in the new 8K hyperlapse mode. Uh, now a hyperlapse is essentially where you go from point A to point B or beyond, uh, and you've sped that up. So it's kind of like a time lapse, except that it's usually a bit more stabilized, so the video in theory looks a lot smoother. And uh, that's much more challenging when you're up in the air because of the fact that, you know, just even a slight bit of movement uh, means that the pictures might not align quite right and the video might not look smooth. Uh, still, we're gonna test things out. Of course, hyperlapse has been around in DJI products for a number of years, but not the 8K part. And that's brought in primarily with the Mavic 2 Air, Mavic Air 2, uh, because of the new 48 megapixel photo mode. Uh, and you'll see that as we get up in the air and get going. You wanna fly to the spot that you wanna start things at. Uh, so I'm just gonna go not too far from here and then turn back around again and get the view that I want. And the thing to keep in mind with any sort of hyperlapse or time lapse uh, is a little bit kind of goes a long way. So you don't need to fly like a thousand meters or something like that, just to keep it kind of small. So the first thing you need to do is validate that you're in 8K mode. So click the dot, dot, dot in the upper right hand corner there. Uh, and you'll see that it doesn't show an 8K option there. That means you're not in hyperlapse mode. So go back to the main menu, click the little uh, film strip icon right there, and then go down to hyperlapse. Uh, and then now go back into the dot, dot, dot in the upper hand corner, and you'll see the 8K option right there. You have two format options. One is MP4 or MOV. Uh, and then you have either 1080p or 8K. There's no other options beyond that. So you can't do, for example, decine-like or something like that uh, because of the fact that this is gonna be compressing this and doing this all based on the photos as opposed to straight video. So once that is set up, you're gonna go back to the hyperlapse and you've got four options, but only two give you 8K. The free mode and waypoint give you 8K, but not course lock or circle. I don't know why, I mean, I suspect it's due to processing power, uh, and this thing is like right on the very edge of what it's capable of, so we're gonna go to waypoint mode because that's the most fun. Move that out of the way, and at the bottom you see camera rotation and the ability to add different waypoints. So I'm gonna move the camera gimbal down a little bit there. We're gonna start like that because I think that's the coolest one. Move it back just a little bit more, not too much further back. There we go, just like that. And I'm gonna tap this first dot right there, or the first plus, sorry. So we've got the first camera angle set, uh, and now we're gonna go forward. Now what we can do here is we can change the camera angle if we want to on this. And you'll see, once I get to this next spot here, I'm just gonna do two points right here. So I'm gonna go out over the water. I think that's gonna be kind of a cool shot right there. You can see me in the corner there. And then you can see as I change the camera angle, watch, you'll see the good, 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 it says rotation, and then eventually it'll show bad, because I've gone too far or too much. Let's see if I can get it to show too large. There we go, right there, uh, down at the bottom. That means it's too great of an angle for the hyperlapse to be very smooth. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of keep it up here. I'm gonna do a very slight rotation down just to the, the edge of the horizon. So only nine degrees, not very much. Then I tap that plus right there. And now I'm ready to go and start this hyperlapse. But before I do that, I got to find the parameters of it. Uh, the first thing is normal sequence. What this means is that you're gonna take it back at the starting point, it's gonna go back to the starting point, fly back there, and then start the hyperlapse. Or I can choose reverse, which means that it'll just simply, using the same camera angles, work its way backwards back to the starting point. So all it is doing is reversing the order of the points. It's not reversing your camera angle or anything like that. That's super helpful if you have flown far away and you wanna conserve battery life. Uh, then is the interval. How often do you wanna take those frames? You'll see right now the duration, if I left it as is, it would take 12 minutes and 30 seconds and take 125 frames. If I go up to every eight seconds, it would take 16 minutes. So I'm gonna keep it every uh, six seconds and I'm gonna change the duration overall here to a 10 second long. But if I do that, it says I don't have enough battery. 27 minutes is more than my battery, so we're gonna go with uh, seven seconds. There we go. And then choose the OK button right there. Uh, and now I'm ready to roll. All I have to do is simply hit this record option and it's gonna fly back to the start there. See, it's, it's doing that right now. It's gonna fly back to where we set it up and the camera angle we set it up at. Uh, so you can see it's going back there right now. It's not too fast when it gets back there. Like in terms of the way it goes, it goes, turns around and then slowly migrates back. I just wish I could like sport mode it back, but whatever, that's fine. And then here in just a second, it's gonna turn itself around and begin. There we go, now it's turning itself around. The ta-da, as my kids just said. Uh, and you'll see it's gonna start in just a second. The counter at the bottom there uh, will start moving here. So here we go. One, there we go. Um, and now we just let it sit. And so it's gonna take 17 minutes for this to complete. I've got 19 minutes of battery, plenty of battery to work with. So let's let it go. Now 
Now is a good time to talk about what it's doing behind the scenes, which is essentially taking a series of photos. And you see that at the bottom there. It's at 110 out of 175, and it's continuing to work its way through that. Each of those photos is those new 48 megapixel photos that has a resolution of 8,000 pixels across, which then allows it to get that full 8K video. Uh, but I'm curious though, as we look into that video, whether it's actually any sharper. Uh, in theory, by having a higher resolution image, we should be able to zoom in a bit more, and we'll do that once we get back. I've got some comparison samples of the 8K video compared to the 4K video uh, in the same sort of spot to see whether or not it is actually any different. Now, one of the unexpected things is that the 8K versus 1080p slider there actually changes the interval that you're allowed to do. Uh, so you saw that the minimum I could choose between photos was every six seconds. Uh, that's because it's taking that 48 megapixel image versus if you go to 1080p, then it can just take a bunch of standard images at 12 megapixels uh, and allows you to choose every two seconds. So that's something to be super aware of. It's also a really good indicator that you haven't toggled back to the 8K mode from the 1080p mode. So it's like a warning flag in your head that, hey, it's not quite in the right mode. Okay, and if you're finding this interesting or useful, definitely whack that like button at the bottom right there. Uh, it's really appreciated and helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Also, if you want to see more Mavic Air 2 videos, there's a link up in the corner there, a playlist. Uh, I've got the ActorTrack versus a Scadio 2 drone, which is pretty crazy. And even crazier than that is the high wind stuff over 50 km hour winds, testing it out to see whether or not it can hold up to the winds of the Netherlands here. So you saw there that the return to home came up, and in, in particular, it wanted to go ahead and finish that up. So it actually ended the session, which is fine, uh, but it does save it. In fact, you can go into the videos and see it on your aircraft. However, you can't actually play back the AK one, so you click play there, so you have to click the PC to connect to it. It also won't download a cast version of it, whereas if you look at something like a 1080p one, uh, this will go ahead and allow you to play that back. So again, indicator that you've done 1080p, versus 4K. Okay, here we are back inside. Uh, now the first kind of a notable interesting thing is that there's no post-processing required for these files. I can just take them straight off the SD card right on my computer, which is kind of nice. Some of DJI's past stuff has required app processing. This isn't the case there. Now looking at the file sizes there, uh, you'll see they're not that big. And of course the reason they're not that big is because they're not that long. At only nine seconds long, it's, it's no big deal. Now in my case, none of my machines had any issues playing any of these files. Uh, from my iMac 5K to my two-year-old MacBook to to this uh, Lenovo three-year-old ThinkBook here, no issues at all playing back the files with one little catch. You'll notice how there's issues with seeing the full picture. Uh, it's basically like there's four blocks there, I'm only seeing two of the four blocks. And this happened on all of my computers, Mac, PC, the latest updates of both of those, the same thing on all of them, where basically when I would play it back, it would show those two gray blocks on both of them. I tried third-party H.265 compliant apps like Final Cut Pro and GoPro VR Editor and uh, Videoland or VLC on Mac, no love at all. On Windows, though, I finally got Premiere Pro to play it, and then from there I converted it at full bitrate natively back across again so I could use it on my Mac. Now I've got a few different 8K files to show you. We're going to start with this Windmill one here, the one we just did this entire kind of tutorial on, uh, and you'll see as I play it back, it's a little bit jumpy, or a lot bouncy, really. Uh, now, remember, this was not a windy day. You can go back to the beginning of the video, and you can see me there with the uh, bushes behind me, and it was pretty much perfectly still. Uh, so I then tried to apply Final Cut Pro's stabilizer to it, and honestly, it didn't really make it any better. It was just a different type of suck. It was just different, but not better. But then I remembered something. I had accidentally taken a couple of 1080p, so non-8K hyperlapses with this, uh, when it had reset my 8K setting back again. So again, things to be aware of. It does do that, apparently, for some reason. Uh, and so I looked at those, and those were taken within minutes or an hour on either side of this one. So the same wind conditions, same everything. And those look beautiful, like super smooth, minor things you can quibble it, but otherwise spot on. And one of those, I changed the camera angle. It didn't really come out the way I wanted it to, but you can see stabilization-wise, it's more or less fine. Now, mind you, the 8K jumpiest was not an isolated case. For example, here's this morning's 8K shot. Uh, it was definitely a little bit windier today, but not too much. Uh, and it's all over the place. I had added a slight bit of down gimbal over it over the course of the hyperlapse, uh, but not as much as it ended up with by the end of the hyperlapse. And then here's another 8K shot from yesterday, also calm day. And you can see that it's not exposed correctly at all, but just ignore that for the moment. Uh, and you'll see that it's still pretty darn bumpy uh, compared to those 1080p shots that we had. Now, of course, like everything in video or YouTube, uh, there's always someone that can find a way to salvage everything. And I'm sure with enough tweaking, with enough different stabilization software, perhaps After Effects or something else, uh, you could find a way to salvage these. Uh, I think for most people, though, they're pretty rough. And I tweaked the settings for probably a couple hours trying to get the right things and, and not quite so much. So the better question, though, is why are they so challenging? Why are they so bumpy? 
Get ready for this rabbit hole, because we're going deep down this hole. Uh, now, there's two things here. Now, the first reason is because of the sampling interval. In the 1080p option, you get every two seconds, or up to every two seconds if you want to, versus 8K is up to every six seconds. So that means you get three times the number of images for your hype lapse. That means when it goes to process that behind the scenes, it has three times the data points to smooth out any of those little bumps of the air, or the camera churning, all the kind of stuff. Uh, it's just got way more data to work with. The second piece is around the resolution itself. When you're shooting 1080p, that means they have a much, much bigger sensor to work with to get that framing and stabilization correct. It's the exact same concept that DJI does on their action camera, the same concept that GoPro does on their action camera, where they have a much bigger sensor plate, and then the actual piece they give you to use for 1080p or 2.7K or 4K, whatever it may be, even 8K in this case, uh, is a portion of that. And I'll show you some more on that in just a second. But let's set that aside for a second. Let's imagine you do manage to get yourself a silky smooth, somehow perfectly done 8K hyperlapse uh, before having to do any stabilization. Is the resolution any better? So this morning, right before I started another 8K hyperlapse, I shot a series of images and videos. I shot some 4K video, just stationary, and I shot some normal photos, and I shot some uh, 48 megapixel photos. And so I basically want to look and see what did it look like from a resolution standpoint when you compare those different levels. Now looking at these two side by side here, on the left hand side we have the 4K image, 4K video, sorry, and on the right hand side we have the 8K video. And now you see right away there's a boat obviously that just started to float through the scene, but more importantly on the 4K video the exposure is much more even. Some might argue it's slightly overexposed on the left hand side of the image, uh, but the right hand side is perfectly spot on exposed. Versus the 8K hyperlapse, it's clearly way underexposed on the right hand side of the image, especially along the water's edge. The left hand side of the image, one might argue is exposed correctly, but it is bright sunlight, so it should have been a bit brighter. Either way, the 8K hyperlapse just feels a bit underexposed to me, which is a pattern I saw in every single 8K hyperlapse I did. They were all a bit underexposed, a bit dark, if you will, uh, compared to the things I shot directly before, like seconds or minutes before them, um, which were just spot on beautifully exposed. But let's go ahead and zoom in on the trees a little bit. I'm going to zoom into 400% down the lower right hand corner uh, and find the trees there that are aligned roughly correctly. Keeping in mind the perspective changes when you go from video mode to photo mode and photo mode is what you use for the hyperlapse. So it's not like a perfect alignment of the two, but that's fine. You get the point. And you can see it's slightly easier to pick out the individual white flowers on the 8K version. Uh, and there's definitely way more grain on the 4K version. There's no doubt about that. But again, we're zoomed in to 400%. So that's what you're probably going to see. But to really make things clear here, we're going to go zoom into the bridge instead. So again, 400% on the bridge and boom, now we're talking. This is a totally different ball game. Uh, this is a well-exposed area and in that the hyperlapse has no problems getting super clear imagery. I and mean, it's massive the difference in clarity between the 8K version and that 4K version. But now let's go to 800% here. Uh, so in this case, the 4K version is essentially a complete dumpster fire um, versus the 8K version is mostly viable, kind of. Uh, I mean, it's it, you can see the point here is that it's incredibly crispy when you start to zoom in when it's exposed correct. Oh, no, 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 we're not done yet. Now, I'm gonna take a 48 megapixel image that I shot just before I started the hyperlapse this morning, and you can immediately see when I throw up on the screen here, what's going on. That looks crystal clear. Exposure is correct on both sides. Like it's pretty darn good. Um, now, obviously it's got more headroom and bottom room because they're not cropping that off to get 16 by nine uh, versus the four by three that it has right there. Uh, but that looks super clear. But why? Why is it that that 48 megapixel image looks so crispy, so spot on from resolution, from an everything standpoint uh, versus the AK hyperlapse looks like mm, blah uh, when it comes from an exposure and other things like that and you start to really pick into the picture a bit more. Uh, and I think the answer is the imaging pipeline. If we look, for example, at the Mavic Air 2 and other areas, we see APAS 3.0, which is the obstacle avoidance piece that keeps it from crashing into things. It's vastly improved in the Mavic Air 2. They do a bunch of 3D mapping of the world as you fly through it. But in order to do that, they're leveraging some of the imaging pipeline that they use for shooting, which is why, for example, you cannot do 4K 60 mode with APAS 3.0 enabled. You also can't do 120 frames per second with APAS 3.0 enabled. And so I think if you back into the 8K side of things a little bit, they're probably stealing a little bit over here to pay for over there. And that's why ultimately it's not quite as crispy as we might want. Still, I appreciate DJI going and trying to push in the limits what's possible. I think by them throwing out the AK thing out there, that sort of puts a milestone on the ground for both them and their competitors to look at to try to achieve better or to best or whatever the case may be. Uh, and I think that if we look a couple firmware versions down the road, most of the things I talked about might be able to be fixed. Uh, I don't think that six second limitation, I don't think they can fix that because that's the limitation of the 48 megapixel photos underneath it. But I think certainly the encoding the files, I think the exposure probably can be addressed, uh, that kind of stuff. 
they probably can handle in subsequent firmware updates for the Mavic Air 2. Okay, hopefully you found this interesting. I dropped a couple of the original files, those 8K original files, and the 1080p ones up in a share somewhere up there. You'll see it in the description or something. Just poke around it, you'll find it. Uh, if you did find this interesting, go ahead and rock that like button at the bottom there. It really helps with the channel quite a bit. Or hit subscribe for more sports technology goodness, whether it be this or other sporty stuff. Uh, that's what it's all about here. Have a good one.